now. And then we can all have a good laugh in a minute. So I think well, we might be recording. We seem to be recording. Be recording. Yes, it does. So uh, if you if you've already been on Dear Charles Tribe on Facebook, you will probably be having hysteria. Um, how we're back to we, we're yeah. sort of back to normal now. <laughs> At least we think we are. Uh, and tonight we're going to talk about tree magic, which is the tree magic course I'm starting in on the 1st of January next year and it's actually available to book now uh, on the Deer Trolls Tribe site and I've put all that up on Deer Trolls Tribe Facebook where you may be having a laugh right now <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know and, and so you can actually go and sign on to it now, if you were so wonderful as to sign up before midwinter this year, what is it you're going to get, Fiona? A handmade ogham stick, or mm -hmm. ogham stick, if you prefer that pronunciation. Yeah. With the complete run of the ogham staves all the way from one end to the other. Yep, yep. And they go up as they do on the stone, on the corner of a stone, usually. Yes. And we found them out in the wild sort of thing. Do you have wild ogham? I'm not aware of any wild dog. You can have wild rooms, but I'm not aware of any wild dog. But well, yeah, it's not, I don't it's know. not it, my specialist subject, you know, as you as you very well know. Yes, so yes. I, I mean, she's extremely good at runes, as I'm sure you all know, and um, I'm not, and <laughs> I'm reasonably good with the ogre. <laughs> and I'm not. Well, you see, because I have a degree in Celtic studies, I should be. I, I, we did cover it. When I was at university, but only briefly, and it didn't speak to me. So, there we go. Well, if it doesn't speak to you, this is it. And so, I mean, you know, don't feel, you know, if if it's not speaking to you, you ain't got to sign up for it. Yeah. But if it is speaking to you, I think it's rather fun. It's a lot, lot more than you usually get taught in um, more academic -y courses. Oh, yes. Um, or even non-academic -y courses, really. Because um, I've tried to put together what I was taught when I was about yay high to a grasshopper sort of thing. And um, because my dad did it and several of the other people in the village did it, including my uncle Jack, who was a woodsman. So he really liked trees. So that was him. And so I sort of picked it up as you went along. And it's got so much more to it than what you read in books and academic stuff. Uh, yeah, academics have this drawback. They have to be able to evidence everything from written sources or archaeology. Yes. And they're not allowed to just know. No. Which, of course, is the great advantage of being a shaman. Yes. Because we are expected to just know. Indeed, we are. We do get knocked down every now and again when somebody says, you haven't got any evidence for that. And you sort of go, I don't have any footnotes, no. <laughs> but the yeah, other interesting thing called personal gnosis. <laughs> yeah, but personal gnosis doesn't go down very well in universities usually, does no, it? Not usually. <laughs> <laughs> you might get away with it on a creative writing course. And that's about all, and not even yeah. them all the time either, some with some of them. Mm. But the interesting thing that I found, and I think you have too, is that when you actually meet and get to get friendly with some archaeologists they all have gnosis of course they do most of them are perfectly good dowsers yes they just don't say so yes in writing and 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 preferably well they think about who they're going to tell um even verbally because it could mean their job mm. Mm. and i mean we, we say we're a nice free society do we um mm. yeah well, <laughs> yes, there's all sorts of funny little things. Ooh, you can't say that. Mm. Um, but I know they do because um, I've managed to get friendly with three or four over the past 20 years. And the things they come out with, and then, you know, you're sort of sitting around having a cup of coffee or whatever. And um, they, they're, they're right into it. And they sort of say, well, 
it really feels like that, but of course they can't prove it. Yep. Well, on this tree course, you don't have to prove anything except what feels right to you. Um, well, that's not quite true. I mean, I'd really rather you didn't assign the qualities of um, elm, for instance, that's the Scots pine, to beef, that's the birch tree, because they really don't. No, and if you do try, the trees won't let you. No, they it won't. won't work. <laughs> and you will find yourself getting in a knot. Um, and if you find yourself getting in a knot, then go back to the tree and say, what am I doing wrong? Yes, absolutely. It really works. But there's loads and loads of practical stuff in it. And there is a bit of um, writing and reading, obviously, since I wrote it, you read it, um, which will give you some ideas of things. I mean, for a start off, well, the course works with both the moons, and there are 13 moons, and there have people have assigned for a very long time, uh, but um, birch trees, I was going to say, ogham trees <laughs> to the moons, and they seem to work well together, and I was certainly taught that. Um, but there are also um, five Ogham symbols, the vowel symbols, which are, you know, like the five vowels, A, I, O, U, only they don't come in that order, of course. And because uh, <laughs> it just wouldn't, it doesn't. And well, it, was never written, it was never composed for, for English. No, well, we don't, no. sure. well, it wouldn't, it, no, it would have been composed for Brythonic if it was anything, not Anglo Saxon English. Well, Q Celtic, not P Celtic, Irish. Oh, yes. yes. Well, we think so. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, the trouble is, I mean, the only real records we've got is some very late stuff, probably written by monks, because most things were, because they were only people who could write. Um, who, you know, you take them with a pinch of salt, because obviously all of this stuff was the devil kind of thing. And some of them are worse at, at doing that than others, but some of them are quite reasonable. But it was acres and acres after. And the only stuff we've got before that is these blooming great stones lying around the landscape in Scotland and Ireland. Mm. And they don't exactly tell you a lot. Well, first you have to know how to read them. Indeed. But even if you can read them, what they say up the side of themselves... The, may... Scottish, ones, the Scottish ones in particular are difficult because they seem to be written in Pictish. Yes. And the trouble with Pictish is we don't really know anything about it, no. except it was a P-Celtic language related to Brythonic and Welsh and, and Breton. Which it's sort of related to Scottish Gaelic, Irish Gaelic or Manx Gaelic. Which sort of, you know, you were saying just now, well, it was um, Q-Celtic and Irish mm -hmm. until you get to Scotland. Yes, but the Picts are much later. They've picked it up. Scots were living, the, the, the Scots who were originally Irish, and this gets really confusing now. Excuse me, I'm thinking of 1066 and all that. <laughs> they all lived in brackets, yes. Like that. You, have like that. You, have to, you have to remember that all this is happening around the time that the Romans were still clogging around what's now England and Wales. And yes. what was going on beyond the Hadrian's Wall, they didn't write, they not go. They didn't write anything about it, so we don't have written records. What we do have is archaeology and folklore and the Irish annals, mm -hmm. which are written by monks from about 700 onwards. Yeah. And then as Christianity spreads, the monks spread as with it, and you get to start getting the Scottish annals. Mm -hmm. However, what seems to have happened, as far as we can tell from archaeology, is that the Picts are a Brythonic tribe or group of tribes, nobody knows, mm -hmm. who live roughly up the east side of Scotland. Yeah. And somewhere around about the first three, two centuries after the year dot, maybe the two centuries before the year dot, a group of Irish Q Celtic speakers moved that 12 miles across the channel and started settling in the Western Isles and the Hebrides and Argyle and places like that. Indeed. The name Argyle means yeah. the land of the Gaels. 
So we then have this group coming in from the, the West who are technically Irish, but who are known as the Scotty. And that's where Scotland gets its name. So the Scots are actually Irish. I could really confuse you by talking about the Peacocks who then moved over to Ireland, but let's not just- Well, no, no, them. they do in 1066 and all that. This is an absolutely brilliant history book. Well, well this is true, yes. There, there are what is known as the Irish Picts. Though if you say that to any Celticist, they will turn purple and blow steam out of their ears. <laughs> well, never mind. It's probably good for them. Probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I seriously, uh, I have to say this now, we yes. really do recommend that you go and read a book called 1066 and all that. Absolutely. And preferably get the illustrated version if there is, if there, I'm not even sure there is anything but the illustrated version. It should still be around. Yes. And, oh, it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm sure I've seen it on um, Amazon or something fairly recently. I mean, I've, I've had a copy since the year dot and yeah. um i grew up on it yeah it's it's hysterical it's our history um british history including bits and pieces of ireland but mostly england and a bit of scotland mm. and a bit of wales because it was written by a couple of english blokes wasn't it yes yes um and it two things it shows you is one is now you're a bit too young. I think you've got better history than I did. But I was actually, when I first started doing history, I was taught the way these guys were. <laughs> I had to grown up on 1066 and all that as well. Yeah, as well. And um, I mean, it was almost like you learn it by rote, mm. um, which is not the way to learn anything. And you're certainly not going to do it in in um, tree magic course. You are not learning by well. You, it's a couple of things you learn by rote, but. Um, yeah, otherwise, then you, no. Then you live them. Mm, yeah. Yes. But you just need them as a sort of basic structure. Yes. Um, and anyway, they turn this thing up up together, and I can't remember the whole quote. There's a whole thing about the the Irish who went to Scotland, and then the Scots who came back to Ireland, and it goes on from you know about yay long paragraph. Oh yes. And yeah. um, and they ended up with um, and the. Irish or the Scots, I can't remember which, lived in brackets. Yes. <laughs> Parentheses. Yes. <laughs> because you, when you were taught, you see, <laughs> there was the teacher scrawling on the blackboard and you had to write it down and copy it. So, of course, teachers, they didn't have bad handwriting, but chalk is not exactly the ideal means. Yeah. And um, so you got it wrong. And um, so you learnt it wrong, which was really good. Um, yep. Anyway, anyway, that was 1066 and all that. Excuse me a moment, I just have to shut the door because husband is listening to some music or something in there. And in fact, the whole thing with the Picts is a bit of a diversion from, from our own because they may have used it on a few screens, yeah. yeah. but that's all we know about it. And we don't know anything about what else they might have been doing with it no. or where they got it from. Okay. And we can't really read the inscriptions that they left. So they're a bit of a red herring altogether. Um, except the fact that they're there. Yes. The very first Ogham stone I ever saw, which was a long time ago, uh, on my very first visit to Scotland, and um, towards the end of our visit, as my current hubby and I, um, we went looking for it, and so we hiked off across this, up this muddy track and then across this field to this totally stunning amazing stone I and mean, it's big it's a lot mm. bigger than me mm. and i can't remember which one it was but it's it was sort of a bit to the left of the field but near sort of left of middle in the field um that's a really really good description you know precisely which stone i mean now don't you i haven't a clue <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me to find it i might as well stick a pin in the map <laughs> exactly um but no it, it's stunning Mm. And there it is. And they write it. Um, I'm going to have to do this. So I've got a bit of spare paper. So when you write it, you've got like a vertical line, which is sort of represents the angle of the stone. You know, you've got so you've got the left side and the front kind of thing. And then you you put lines going out from each side. 
I've probably written a load of rubbish here, but so you might get whatever you've written that looks something like that, which is a bit weird. Um, but people did actually learn to translate it insofar as they can. And it did come out with some alphabet letters. So we do use them. Um, I don't know whether that's truly accurate or not. Uh, I don't think anybody does, do they? Let me let me just share this. Right. This is oh. Roman Aberdeenshire. Yes, been it's there. A, it's a Pictish stone. Yes, I know, I took you there. It's a Pictish stone in Inverurie, which is in Aberdeenshire. And as you can see, it has mysterious Pictish symbols. Indeed, which are utterly gorgeous. It also has... There's your line. There's your inscription. And there's your... You read it from bottom to top. Indeed. And in that's fact, exactly how they used it. In fact, I, th I think I can actually translate the bottom one. I think it's Y. It might be. I don't, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> Sorry, I'm showing off. <laughs> but um, yes. Um, apparently, it's one of these Pictish ones that makes very little sense. Because that's what it means. Ah, so, okay, yeah, that, I was right then, it was a Y. I know it looks like, I know they put it as I, but I bet... Well, there, isn't a, there isn't a Y in any Gallic... No, exactly. Language. And anyway... So um, that as an I. Yeah, and y the way you say it in, for the Ogham, well, the way we say it, we don't know if it's the way it was said, is yellow. And um, that you spell I-O-L-O. Mm. So there you are. Quite a quite a common Welsh name, your name. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's actual live organ for you. There you go. So so yeah, this is the sort of thing you will be learning, and it is it was definitely used, and I'm sure it was used other than that. I mean, can you imagine writing, you know, I'm then writing a letter to Fiona saying, you know, are you coming down next weekend? So I find a bit of stone and I carefully chip this in and then I post the stone to her. No. Yeah, yeah. No. Your postage charges are going to be good. Yeah. Mm. And in those days, it would have been, what? what <laughs> you want me to do what? <laughs> yes. um, so no, um, I'm sure they were used on um, bark paper or vellum or whatever it was that we'd made because we certainly did. I mean, everybody did. It's so easy to make. Or simply carved up a stick. Yeah, up a stick, as you're going to get. Mm. And at least a stick is easier than, um, you know, a lump of stone. But the yeah. other thing is, I mean, we've both made ink, haven't we? Mm. Out of, um, well, bark for a start. Oak, um, oak, oak galls. Oak galls, what else is there? There, there is the, the various mushrooms who produce black oak. Yes, oil. there is, yeah. And our ancestors knew this too. I mean, they're actually using the blooming stuff probably Absolutely. up until the Brown, Northern. Brown and oak galls is what all the monks were using. For yeah, the, exactly. The yeah, yeah. And if you've made yourself a bit of bark paper, hmm. um, or you've got a bit of um, vellum, which is just the skin of the animal you ate for dinner, Yes. Um, well, after a few processes, but it is. Yes. And um, that's much easier. And I mean, you can actually stuff that in your pocket. Yes. Oh, you didn't have a pocket, but yeah, your you bag, your strap. Back. Yes. Yeah. And so it was easy. So you would do that. But um, as it, I mean, I'm sure you all left a piece of paper out in the wet. And it lasts so long, doesn't it? Depends on the paper. 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. yeah on a rough one um and i mean even bark paper which is tougher than our pulp paper which is still wood by the way this is still wood under, under rare conditions there are old things like i mean the vindolanda tablets for example yeah, under, where, the where did they find them circumstances, they can last mm. but it's highly unusual and they didn't find them in a nice wet boggy climate like ours the Vindolanda ones came from Hedrin's Wall. Ah, okay. Fair enough. Yes, they did. And they are birch, I think. 
Yeah. But the, the circumstances were exceptional. And they were pretty dry compared to the way most of us live now, let alone lived then. Um, so. Mm. And the same sort of thing happens, only slower, with bits of leather. Yes. Um, they will, at least what you've scratched into them or painted on them with your ink or whatever, they will, that will wear off. You may still end up with the leather. If it was scratched in with mm. something, a point, there may faintly be the re remains of it. But that will all go because it's all organic. So it all is going to dissolve down. It's going mm. into compost, using one of our favorite words. <laughs> so we don't actually know much about the things that we're, we don't actually know historically or academically much about the things that we are talking about when, with all them. Does that doesn't mean to say you can't learn about it? Absolutely not. And as you probably, you know, if you've done anything with, well, any form of magic, and if you've done any of the work on the Deer Trolls tribe, you'll know that you know things because you know them in here and in here, which is a sort of combination. It's sort of like a thing that goes between the two. And you know it. Mm. And you don't need a load of footnotes in order to make it real for you. No, indeed. In fact, they can get in the way. Indeed, yeah. In fact, usually with our, certainly with our apprentices, you have to spend a season or two <laughs> working through the morass of necessary footnotes that they've had to live with up to now. Yes. They'll get there, it's fine. Because we all want to get there. That's the main thing. So we're going to. But anyway, I'm oh, back, 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 reverse madly. They're about the moons and the sun. At least they work with the moons and the sun. They're not about them. Because there are the 13 moons, as I said, and then there are these five vowel sounds, and that's where we got lost. Sorry about this, but hopefully you didn't mind the diversion. We're now back down the track again. Because, as you know, there are midwinter, which is just coming up. Then we've got spring, which is the equinox. Then we've got midsummer, and then we've got the autumn equinox. Now, midsummer and midwinter are solstices. There are times when the sun actually appears, doesn't actually stand still, but it appears to stand still and come up in the same place on the horizon for three days. And in midwinter, it's the three days of 22nd, 23rd and 24th. It's, mid it's the, like a movable feast, I'd have to look at the dates. Well, you, it's yeah. around there. We, it's the ones that we use because Obviously, we're whizzing around at however many million miles an hour it is, and we're whizzing around the sun at still more million miles an hour, and the sun and the whole gap down don't need it looked up. <laughs> and, um, that, and the galaxy is whizzing around in space, uh, millions and millions of miles an hour. So we're none of us still. So the stars and everything else that we count from, and that our ancestors counted from, remember, are in a slightly different place than they were a thousand years ago, 5,000 years ago, and 5 million years ago even. So things do move slightly, but for convenience, we use the longest day being the 21st, the shortest day being the 21st of December, yep. three days of standstill, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and then guess what? The 25th, has been special to us for a very long time, not just 2,000 years. Because oh, that, that's the day that the sun appears to move, start moving again. Mm. And where it, up to now, it's still rising closer and closer to um, southeast, isn't it? My brain's, yes, must be. It's east, it's south of east. Yes. Yes, it must be, <laughs> and which is why the days are getting shorter, and it sets um, southwest. Southwest. So 
your arc of daylight, you know, in midsummer, you've got masses of daylight all the way around there. And then at midwinter, you've got only a little tiny bit like that. And it's even worse up with Fiona than it is down, down <laughs> here for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then it, it all turns around and you start getting lighter days again from the 21st. So it's really special time. And of course our ancestors saw it and knew it and celebrated it. I mean, Stonehenge was one of the places they celebrated it in the, the West Arch, which is the middle of the three trilithons. And um, if you go there, and I've got a picture of it on the course, um, you get the sunset blazing away beautifully in this central arch. Yes. And so, you do the same thing in places like Newgrange. Yes, you do. Most of the stone circles around here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of, some of them, Kalanish in the, the Western Hebrides, oh, yes, yes. is fantastic. It has so many alignments, it's quite stunning. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very important date and has been for a very long time. And very obviously why, and it doesn't have anything to do with agriculture. I mean, it does later, but it doesn't in its initial sense, is because it gets darker and darker and darker, and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Yes. And of course, at midsummer, it does the reverse because it's got lighter and lighter and lighter, and then it gets darker and darker and darker. And at the two equinoxes, equal nights, is what it means. Um, you get equal hours of daylight and darkness. And the sun actually does rise in the east, mm. the due east. Yes. And both days. And it sets due west. Due west. Only for that one day, each, well, you know, each end of the, each side of the year. Yes. And so they get celebrated with the album with four of the five bowels and we get uh, you go into that and how that works with both the moon that is at that time and with the other trees that also work around that time and usually there's only one other tree but in a couple of cases there are two other trees and um apple and uh, hazel a one back over in the summer and um then we've still got this fifth vowel which is actually yolo which is the old one yes and it's you its tree is you which is a wow tree because they can be so old i mean i used to live near one that was three thousand plus years old that was what, about five miles away yeah, and she was huge and she was hollow inside. She was a cauldron and she was this shaped. So she even felt like a pregnant cauldron yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Having, having, been, having been in that tree, you can sit down inside and put your legs out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just a little, a little hollow that you can just squeeze into. No, no. In fact, yeah. we've had we've had three or is it four of us inside all at once. Yeah. Uh, huge. Yeah. And it's you are elsewhere when you are in that tree. And she's absolutely gorgeous, is a she, because um, she produces her fruits, um, which are fantastic. And incidentally, uh, one, well, until not terribly long ago, maybe a hundred or something years ago, were actually used as confetti. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah which is really weird when you start to think about it because you think oh use poisonous and you don't get in a state if somebody gives you a, a, a spoon made out of you you can eat out of it and you won't die of it really yes if you start chewing on the spoon and then trying to digest it you'll a feel sick because you, you can't digest tree and um, b it is not very good for you but what kills you is the seed within the fruit and that is like that. Yes. So we used to throw these at weddings. Ooh, what was all that about? So you're going to explore that um, in the course, which is fun. And the, we do actually get um, another tree, which quite a lot of people are using. 
um, or have been using for quite a long time. And my uncle and dad always insisted that we used it. And that's mistletoe. And we celebrate that with the time of the U um, at, at Yolo, at that Samhain time. And we have either side of it. So you've got mistletoe. Now mistletoe has white berries, remember? Mm -hmm. And now before it comes gort, which is ivy, which has blackberries. And then after it comes um, the gelder rose, which lots of people disagree with, but that's how I was brought up. Um, the gelder rose, which has red berries. So you had the old red, white and black. And that was part of the celebration and it happens around sowing. You also has red berries, of course. It does indeed. Um, and uh, so you've got you've got this red, white and black and the heavier, heavier one of you coming in as well. And that is quite some season. Yes. And that, of course, happens at Samhain, which is what modern people tend to know of as Halloween. Um, and grew out of that and it's a celebration of the dead but also of the living and all sorts of things like open gates and open veils and open dog mouths <laughs> which is going to happen any minute now <laughs> it's my favorite pink dog and um, so there's all this sort of stuff that comes and happens at the same time another interesting one which you'll be learning is you probably all know about new moon, um, first quarter, full moon, uh, last quarter. But there are four more phases of the moon as well. And um, when, they're, when, it's, um, when it's fat, i.e. after the first, um, first and last quarters, Oh, sorry, after the first quarter and before the, the second quarter, um, when it's fat, they call it gibbous because it looks, it's not full, but it's big, you know, and it's more than this sort of half a circle thing. And I can't remember what the other one's called now. Brain's gone. Don't worry. Anyway. Waning was the other one. Waning, that's it. And so you have the waxing, that's waxing and waning. So, so well, that's the two sides. So you've got waxing crescent and then waxing gibbous, and then you've got waning gibbous and you've got waning crescent. And of course the crescents are the most beautiful ones. You know, this lovely sickle shape. I've been watching them this last week. I know, it's been gorgeous. And we've actually had clear skies here so I can go and go, hi, yes, she is. <laughs> My celebrations are sort of not terribly serious, but they are, but they're not solemn. Yes. And, um, and I love from this guy. Oh, you are so beautiful. And um, I think we've both probably been doing that. Yes. Fortunately, yes. nobody else much lives around us, so they don't go, oh, blimey, this weirdo bloody woman again. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, ditto, but there you go. And um, so we've actually got eight phases of the moon and those eight phases of the moon also refer us back to our eight seasons of the year so it's quite complicated this mix-up you know you've got the four suns quarters and you've got the 13 moons and you've got the eight phases and you've got the eight seasons and you've got um 15 Yes, 15 consonant trees that have hard letters like k, b, uh, r, and that sort of thing. And then you have the five vowel trees, which are a, i, o, u, and big mouth, you know. And, um, but no, not really any tongue stuff happening in there. Mm -hmm. And that's important too, how you actually say them whether you're using your tongue and your teeth and your mouth or whether you're just echoing in your mouth hollow and letting it happen through your vocal cords and shaping the sound by the shape of your mouth you know 
A is like that, and I and O is in the different shapes of your mouth. So you're going to get frightfully excited because one of the exercises is you have to do that. <laughs> you sit there chanting. <laughs> And uh, it, it's fun. It's gorgeous, actually. Um, you may get a few stares, so don't do it. And anybody's going to stare at you. It's the easiest thing. You know, go and find somewhere underneath something out of the way. Um, so you're going to get all of this, like, through your body and through your the voice and through the sound and through the air and feel them. And, of course, if you can, and you may not all be able to because it depends where you live, Try and get a piece of the tree that you are actually working with. Please try not to buy it. I mean, if you have to buy it, okay, you have to buy it. But try and ask and then go for a walk and see if it comes to you. Find the actual tree. It's usually a twig or something somewhere. Yeah. Well, there was a really funny one that I had with a student um, back in the, a bit before midsummer. <clears throat> and I was looking for Gelderos, which used to be very common down in Herefordshire. And, you know, I've been out a bit and I haven't seen any. So we were talking about it because my student wanted it as well. And we've been out for about a couple of hours walk and we were just heading down the hill back towards the car again. And what I walked past something and this glorious scent came out and hit me. And I went, whoa, like this. And there I was, nose to nose, with a whole, well, it turned out to be three treefuls of Gelder Rose flowers. Lovely. And I mean, <laughs> talk about asking for something and have this huge, enormous amount. <laughs> so we, um, we asked if we could have some. Oh, look at that nose. She's trying desperately to climb on me. She wants to sit on me. Oh, sweetie, in a minute. Uh, um, so we, we asked if we could take some, we could, and it actually told us to take um, quite a big branch, you know, like as long as my arm, um, from each of the three trees. And, oh, that one. Oh, that one. This is one of those knowing things, you know, when the branch almost goes me at you. And uh, <laughs> so we did, and we kept our flowers for as long as they would, but also we both grew them as cuttings. Excellent. And I ended up with about half a dozen, and my student ended up with about half a dozen cousin cuttings, and they're all growing, and I know where my cuttings are going. Yes, good. So, and it, it's gorgeous because you haven't actually bought it from a shop, you've actually been gifted it by the land. Yes. And it's so nice when you do that, and you might want to try and do that. I mean, something that is hard for me but not for you, is Elm, the Scots pine. Yes. yes. She lives surrounded by the bloody things because she's up in Pickland in North Aberdeenshire. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, and I'm not, well, I know where there is one and because I, I planted one last autumn in the garden, but pull up things only about two and a half feet high at the most at the moment, so I'm not taking anything from it. No, no, no. But uh, later on, because I mean, you're able to get the gum from when when yes. you cut one, they bleed and they bleed this gum. Yes. And the scent is just out of this world. Scent is fantastic. Yeah. Far better than any pine scented thing you can buy in the shops. Yeah, oh, yeah. Actual pine is different and it's beautiful. Yeah. And it's very good for um, using as a gum if you make incenses, if you want to make the balls or cones of incense, you can use it for that. And it's also good as, a, obviously good as a fire lighter, because of course this is the oil. Yes. And I mean, whoosh, you know, put a match to it and whoa. <laughs> it's also very useful as a decongestion. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. Yes. And you'll probably find that an awful lot of the trees, well, I mean, plants are anyway, but you'll find that kind of thing to work with in the Ogham course. So this is, you know, there's masses, masses, masses more. You're not going to be learning stuff that, you know, um, Giraldus or some other bloody monk wrote. 
And you can if you want, because I mean, you can get that on Google, which is fine, and add it in to the cauldron. But it's all about you finding out for yourself. Yes. Sorry, I've got the dogs trying to play with me now. I know. <laughs> what we have, very well chewed con. <sighs> so, oh, that's very good. That's very good. Oh, did I mention divination? You didn't. You should. Oh, yeah, you're going to learn about how to divine with the Ogham as well, which is really a lot about how to divine, period. Um, yes. It's just that you'll be using the, the Ogham as your helpmate. And they are very, very good, of course, because trees talk. Yes. And you know Fiona's doing, maybe next year now, Fiona's doing the Animal Shaman course, which is about animals actually being shamans who teach us. Well, in the Ogham, you're learning how trees are also shamans who teach us. Yes. So, you know, they're going to be very good at, you know, helping you to get divination going. Uh, for yourself first, before you go rushing out, offering it to other people. You know, get a feel for it for yourself. But So you're going to be very busy for 14 months. Indeed. <laughs> It's a good long course, that one. You yeah. need that time to get it into your bones. Sorry, love. You need that time to get it into your bones properly. You do. You do. You do. And you still may find that it's um, not long enough, but I have made it so that you'll get the lesson every first of the month from when you signed on, or the first of the month after you signed on. And so you sign on on the 15th and you'll get your lesson actually on the first because it'll roll like that. And you'll get it every first of the month. If you need longer than a month to do it, you take longer than a month. And then you'll keep getting the lessons so you can stack them up <coughs> and you'll be paying, paying for them or have paid for them. There's, um, you know, you can pay by installments or in a lump if you wish. And you can roll them. So you can stack them up and if, no, I'm really having trouble with, with beasts. You know, I need to spend longer on it. Or, um, I've got, you know, apple and hazel together and column and quirk, that is. And, and actually, I need more time with them. Um, mm. So you can take as long as you wish. So that's all up to you. And there's a place to go. There's the Dear Trod student page on Facebook which is bring your work there, bring your mind maps and pictures and drawings and notes and questions there. And um, we will both have a go at helping you. And just because Fiona doesn't feel brilliant at, at Ogham, your question may not actually be about the Ogham, it may about, be about doing the work. And she's very yes. good at that. Yes. <laughs> so if it gets to being, um, tell me more about what um, coal means, she might pass that one to me. But yes. if it's about how do I sit with coal properly? And, and when I sat with coal, it was like so-and-so and such and such. Fiona's perfectly capable of helping you with that. It's different. Yes. So there you all go, you mad impetuous people. And that's sign up before midwinter and you get your oven stick. Yes, yes, yes. And um, we might even have one to show uh, next weekish or something. We, we haven't got any at the moment because they've all gone, people. <laughs> <laughs> I have some more words. I'll get to it. And we have not. Um, we didn't take photographs, and so we're going to be better people this time and take photographs. Yes, this time I'll take photos. Mm. Uh, so we'll try and put one up on the on the tribe page. And mm. they, this is it's sort of going to be like this. But of course, it'll all be different because it's all a different piece of wood. Yes. So, anything more to throw in the pot there? So, think about it. Of course, one of the things that you can do is you can work your way through the course, mm -hmm. is collect a piece of the, the appropriate wood or woods for each month and do your own. Yes. We have a set for doing divination with. Yes. Yes. But of yes. course, it's nice to buy something. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be gifted with something. Mm -hmm. But it's even better when you've made the tools yourself. 
because that's your energy and the tree energy working together and it makes a big difference and it's not hard to do i mean all you need is a little twig sort of about yay big will do nicely in fact that's really quite a good size left there and just flatten part of one side leave a little bit just to hang on to and then mm. flatten one side and all you need is like a black pen or a gold pen or a silver pen you don't even have yeah. to do anything more complicated than that no no you can if you want oh, absolutely I mean, you know you'll get your paragraphs thing out and do it it's fine it's fine yes. and um but or if you want to carve it with a knife fine whatever you want to do um but you can do it literally just with your colored pen and they work just as well and then you've actually got your set which is a bit like runes um or even tarot cards only because they're not flat yes. um, and you can work with them in the same way that you would that but again this is all going to be in the course so it'll be fine it's a very good idea to do. I'm not forcing you to do this. I'm not saying thou shalt make this ogham sign this month. <laughs> it is nice if you can. It is. And it's something I find, and you probably do too, you sort of sit in there and you just sort of scrape the bark off and then you cut it a little bit flat with a nice sharp knife. And then you might use a bit of sandpaper and just rub it down so that it's nice. And then you're drawing. And all the time, your mind is actually focused on that tree. Mm. It's a fantastic way to make a connection. Mm. It really is. Yeah. I, I, I encourage my room students to do it with rooms. Yeah. Paint your own, draw your own, carve your own. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're a metalsmith, you could cast your own. Indeed. Or if you're good at ceramics, you could make little ceramic ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. And well, that, no. that also work very well with, with the oven. It would, or even those lovely leather ones that you made. Yes. You know, if you if you're good, you can make little, you know, strips of, of leather and then mm. carve into them, burn into them, paint on them, whatever you want to do. So, you know, it's not like you must make your ogham stave for this month, but you know, you will be suggested. It was it is suggested to. You. Yes. But if you run out of time and you need to do something different, that's fine too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that noise. That was the dog getting tied up in a blanket. We're not going to explain that. No. Anyone yeah. who's got whippets will know that they are duvet dogs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If there is a duvet, they wish to be under it. Mm -hmm. Or in it. Tied in it, but look at this. Oh, well. Well. You'll survive. They will. <laughs> So, I think we shall leave you there. You silly dog. I think we shall leave you there. Yes. And um, yes, do come and have a look at um, what's on the website. Do come and have a look at what's on the Deer Trods page. And, um, you know, contact me if you'd like to do it and sign yourself up. And we'll make yeah. sure Fiona has your name. And if you, you know, when you sign up or after you sign up, I'll remember to ask you anyway. To obviously give us your address because Fiona's got to send it to you. <laughs> and we don't do this beaming thing yet. We haven't really got Scotty's stuff from Star, Mark, Star Trek, no, you know, to no, beam it across. We to We're afraid we do. Yeah, you know, it's a bit basic still, but uh, we'll get there. Uh, be a little patient because we are coming up on, on Christmas postal rush. So, <laughs> but you will get it. All we're yeah. asking is if you sign up by midwinter. Um, you know, by the 21st, well, I mean, if you make it to the 25th or the 27th or something, we'll probably still let you in, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> you know, we're not going to too mean and beastly about it, but as long as you've signed up, you will get your Ogham wand. And you'll be using that too. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Okay, right, well, that's us for now, and um, we'll see what actually happens and I should have to go and look at Facebook because I'm sure it's hysterical. <laughs> Bye for now. See you next Bye week. Bye.